and thanks for the uh, to the Region 10 team. Um, I'm a science educator at the Exploratorium, as Yami said. It, this is a big science museum in San Francisco, and it's kind of a special science museum in, in that it has a, it's pretty much completely hands-on. It has a very inquiry-oriented um, approach, which is very compatible to NGSS, and um, it's was founded by a physics a physicist and a physics teacher, so it's always had a history of having a teacher pro, uh, teacher support program, and so we have lots and lots of resources, and we'll be sharing some of the resources um, today that you'll get to see and work with, but there are many more on the website that um, we hope that if you ever look there that you find something you like. I wanted the rest of the staff to introduce themselves briefly, so um, why don't you go ahead and turn on your uh, turn on your mic and say hello. Hi everyone, Kelsey Lipsitz, another science educator with the Institute for Inquiry. Hi, Michael Fairchild, also with the Institute for Inquiry. And if Rachel's not here yet, we, we will have another educator joining us um, eventually. And she is um, an educator on our staff who had been a teacher for many, many more years than, um, than us and more recently. And we'll talk about some experiences that she's had working with kids on the stuff that we're doing. Um, so let's, um, let me just welcome the people back. Uh, we did a workshop, a similar kind of workshop um, with different materials in October. And for those who got to see this welcome back, um, wonderful to see you again. For those who hadn't seen that one, um, welcome. Wonderful to uh, to get to to work with you. And a little bit about um, what this workshop's like and how it's a little bit different from the last one is that, you know, they, these are difficult times during COVID. And so, on one hand, we're really trying to um, to do work that advances our our work uh, within GSS in the long run, but. You know, for now, we have to acknowledge that everybody's pretty much teaching online. And so we wanted to model for you a number of practices for doing uh, hands-on science online. And, um, and today, we're going to do a lot of integration with literacy, particularly writing. And so um, just to let you know, um, we try to do uh, generalizable kind of approaches to hands-on uh, science online. And so last time, what we did, we did an investigation with snails where only the facilitators, only us had, sna had live snails with us. And we used our telephone as a webcam so that you all could, uh, could tell us where to point the phone or what to, what to do with it. So you could kind of lead the investigation uh, even though you didn't have the materials with you. And that's something even if you don't do it with snails, you can do it with many other things too. Today's experience is a different approach. It's with doing hands-on science with materials that everyone's likely to have around their homes. So um, we're in a few minutes, we're gonna ask you to gather some materials and, um, and we hope that again, this is a generalizable approach. There are many different kinds of activities that you can do with materials found around the home. This is just one of them. Um, we will be working, um, working with uh, a couple of activities that we we call science snacks. Can we have the next slide, please? And that's just an interesting term for a hands-on activity, many of them based on exhibits at the Exploratorium that can be uh, um, made with really simple materials that teachers can get. Uh, and they're these short, neat, interactive hands-on activities. And some of them, like we said, can be done with materials at home. There's you know, hundreds of them on the website. And so you'll get to see a couple of them, but do um, look at the Exploratorium website under snacks and you'll see many, many more um, grouped by grade level and topic. And so you know, everyone's sure to find something they like um, if you look through those. Another idea, it's, uh, next slide, please. Oh, we'll go back. Um, we, I thought there was a schedule coming up, but I'll just tell you orally what our plan is. We'll spend about 45 to 50 minutes or so doing um, 
doing activities and integrating writing with them. We'll be working with different text types. And then we're gonna hand it over to Rachel when she gets on and she'll um, introduce or kind of ground what we've been doing in work she's been doing in the same kind of topic in the classroom about getting kids to do activities. In this case, it's around the subject of sound. That's what we'll be doing today and how uh, young children worked with sound with her, but also how she used the, the practice of modeling to help with writing. So there'll be a lot of really practical things as well as um, hopefully um, really engaging things that you'll do right now. Okay, so this first activity we're going to do is called Head Harp. And before we get started with that one, what I'd like to do is um, each activity we're doing is gonna require you to gather some materials. And so what we wanna do is take about five minutes and um, maybe we can drop a timer into the, into the slide there, there we go. And um, we'll start it in a moment, but we're, we're doing three different activities. So for the first one, you'll need just some string, like a ball of string. Um, but if you don't have string, anything string-like will work. Whether it's dental floss or yarn or, you know, thread from a needle and thread kit or, uh, or a shoelace, you know, anything like that will work. And scissors. We'd also like you to gather a variety of metal objects. And so, you know, the pictured here are things like oven grates, fabulous. You know, if you can get that or, or spoons or coat hangers, you know, any kind of metal object. And we'll be making sounds with all these objects. Finally, and this is one you'll have to interpret a little bit. We really want you to look carefully to see if you can find something that provides evidence that sound makes a vibration you know, back and forth motion, or that vibrations make sound. So you might gather a number of materials to, to be able to show that, and all of these uh, materials that you're gonna gather we'll be using over the next little while. So let's start the clock. Um, we'll leave the slide on so you can see what things you're gathering, but then um, be back and ready to go with your materials in five minutes. Okay, see you soon. Mm -hmm. 